We're solving one-step equations. This is lesson 19a. And of course, I've got videos linked in the description to help you. For an equation to be true, both sides of the equal sign need to represent the same amount. 6 plus 4 equals 10. This side equals 10, and that side equals 10. This side equals 10, and this side equals 10. See how it's balanced? This side equals 3, and that's a 3. This side equals 3, and that side equals 3. When there's a variable in the equation, algebra will help us figure out the value of that variable. When we solve an equation, we find the number that will make the equation true. What value for the variable will make the equation true? We keep both sides of the equal sign balanced. We isolate the variable to one side of the equal sign. and We do that by doing inverse operations to both sides. So the inverse operation is the opposite operation. So if it's an addition problem, we can use subtraction. If it's subtraction, we can use addition. And these are inverses of each other. If it's a multiplication problem, we can use division. And if it's a division problem, we can use multiplication. All right? Now, I want you to remember what we talked about before about that one coefficient. Variable is a letter that takes the place of an unknown amount. And when it's by itself, when it's all lonely like this, there's actually an invisible one in front of it. That's its coefficient. The number in front of the variable is the coefficient. If you're confused about that, you can watch this video that's linked in the description, okay? But it's very important you remember there's really a 1 in front of that that we don't write because we can see there's only one x or there's only one y, so we don't need to write that 1. For addition or subtraction, we create a 0 pair by adding the opposite. We have x plus 3. That's an addition problem, so we're going to add a negative 3. That's going to create a 0 pair here. It's going to turn into a nothing. We drop down the x. When we subtract the 3 from this side, we get a 7. We've isolated x to one side, and we can see it equals 7. Now, this adding a negative is the same thing as subtracting a positive. That was in video 18b and 18f. We talked about that. If you have 5 minus 3, it equals 2. It's the same thing as saying 5 plus a negative 3 equals 2. So that's what we did. We said this is plus a negative 3. Same thing. You can look at it as subtracting or or adding a negative, all right? Same answer. For this one, we have 5 plus y equals 9. So now the variable was in front here. Now the variable is back here. It's the same thing, right? We have a positive 5. We're going to add a negative 5 to each side of the equation, create a 0 pair here. That goes away. And we drop down the y, and we do our subtraction and get a 4. We've isolated the y to equal a 4. Now we've got a subtraction problem. So we're going to add a positive number to create a zero pair here and get rid of the 6, get this x by itself. When we add the 6 to this side of the equation, because we have to do the same thing to each side of the equal sign, we get x is 21. We can do it with fractions and decimals, too. We have x minus 2.4. Well, we just add a plus 2.4 on each side of the equation. That creates a zero pair here. We drop down the x. We add these and get a 10.2. We know x is equal to 10.2. We isolate the variable in a multiplication equation by using division. So we can see this is 8x equals 24. And when the coefficient is next to the variable, that means 8 times something. 8 times some number equals 24. To solve these types of problems, we're going to use division because that's multiplication. So we're going to divide both sides by the 8. You don't do the 24. You do the one that's next to the variable. You do the coefficient, that 8. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by this 8. Same numerator and denominator. We're going to get an 8 over an 8, which is a 1. We don't have to write the 1, so we just get an x. 24 divided by 8 is 3, so we know x equals 3. We've isolated the x to equal 3. Here we've got a negative 4y equals 28. That's still a multiplication problem, so we can divide both sides by the negative 4. That negative sign goes with the coefficient. So we divide both sides by that negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is a positive 1. We don't have to write the 1, so we just have y. 28 divided by negative 4 is negative 7. We've isolated the y to equal negative 7. Here we have a positive 5a equals a negative 20. We divide both sides of the equation by this positive 5 coefficient. We get a 1 
which we don't have to write, and negative 20 divided by 5 is a negative 4. We isolated a to equal negative 4. Same with decimals, or even fractions. We'll get into that in one second with fractions, though. But for decimals, we have a negative 1.2x equals 6. We divide both sides of the equation by that negative 1.2. The negative sign comes with it when we divide. And we get a giant positive 1 out of this. So we have a 1x. We don't have to write the 1s. We just have x. And 6 divided by negative 1.2 is a negative 5. So we've isolated x to equal negative 5. And we isolate the variable in a division problem by using multiplication. So when you see a fraction, like a half, the reciprocal is the upside-down version of it. This was the numerator, now it's the denominator, and the denominator is now the numerator. It just flips around. That's called the reciprocal. So we can isolate the variable in a division problem by using multiplication, and we multiply by the reciprocal, the upside-down version of that fraction. Fractions are little division problems, aren't they? So this is 1 divided by 2x equals 8. It's half x equals 8. We flip this around so the 2 is on the top and the 1 is on the bottom, and we multiply both sides of the equation by that reciprocal. That's going to give us 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 2 is 2. 2 over 2 is a giant 1, isn't it? We don't need to write the 1, so we just have an x here. 8 times 2 is 16 over 1, so we've isolated now we know x equals 16, all right? So we know that the number in front of the variable is the coefficient. There can be a fraction coefficient, okay? We just flip it around and make it a reciprocal. Now take a look at this one. We have x divided by 3 equals 4. We multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the fraction to make the coefficient equal 1. So we know there's an invisible 1 in front of that x, isn't there? So we really have 1x divided by 3. If we flip this around, we don't include the variable. We just use the numbers. So this 1 over the 3 is going to be a 3 over a 1 multiplied on each side. See that? That's going to give us a 3 over a 3x, which is a giant 1 over x, which is just x. This side will give us 12 over 1, which is 12. So we know x equals 12. And that does make sense. 12 divided by 3 is 4, isn't it? Now, in the book it shows you you can use cross-canceling. I think this takes longer. It's saying that you can just multiply both sides of this equation by this denominator 3. And 3 over 1 is the same thing as 3, right? So that's what I did. I just, because this was a fraction, I did that as a fraction. You could just write a 3, you know? You could just say, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, like that. You could do that if you want. I think this is easier on the eyes when you're having trouble with math, because you know when you multiply, you go straight across, right? So you can do it this way and multiply both sides and cross-cancel. That's a 3 and that's a 3, so they cancel each other out as 1s. And you end up with a 1 over a 1, which is 1x, and we don't write the 1. But you know what? 1 over 1 equals 1, and so does 3 over 3. So you're going through all this trouble of cross-canceling and coming up with the same thing, a 1 over a 1, aren't you? It's the same thing as 3 over 3. So this is my preference. You can do whichever way you feel comfortable doing, okay? I just do 3 over 3, which is a 1, and that's an x, okay? We have negative 3 fifths x equals negative 9 tenths. And the negative sign goes with the reciprocal. So if we have negative 3 fifths and we want to write the reciprocal of this, it's going to be negative 5 thirds. We flipped it around and kept that negative sign with it. See that? When we multiply a negative times a negative, we get a positive. So we've got a negative 5 times a negative 3 makes a positive 15, and a negative 3 times a negative 5 makes a positive 15. We have a positive 1. We have x. On this side, when we multiply the 9 times 5, we get 45, and on the 10 times 3, we get a 30, and because it's two negatives, we get a positive. And if you look at this, 15 fits into 45 three times and into 32 times, so we have three halves. X equals 
three halves. So remember when you're doing this and you follow the rules for integer multiplication with the positives and negatives, um, you want to make sure that you're keeping that negative sign with the reciprocal, okay? All right, we have a word problem. It says Tala walks three miles in one hour. Which equation can be used to find how many miles X Tala can walk in four hours? You might be able to figure this out in your head, but I'm trying to show you how they set up these problems on the test, okay? So this is a proportion problem. Three miles is one hour. How many miles is four hours? Three miles over one hour equals X miles over four hours. We need them to equal a giant one. Whatever three times four is, which is 12, the one times X has to equal that 12. So we know X is 12, because one times 12 is 12. It equals a one, so we know it's in proportion. So we've got a three over a one equals X over four, see? And we know three over one is really just a three, right? So we have three equals X divided by four. So if you said number four was the correct answer, you're right, see? So you might have to do a little work on your scratch paper to figure out which equation is correct, all right? This one says, what number divided by 5 equals 6? So basically it's saying x divided by 5 equals 6. But for algebra, we write it x divided by 5 equals 6 like this. And you might be able to say, I know I can multiply these two together and get a 30. So I know x is 30. But to solve it the algebra way, so that you're basically doing the same method when the problems are more difficult than this. We multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this x divided by 5, because there's an invisible 1 there, so we have 1 fifth. We flip it around to be 5 over 1, multiply both sides, get 5 over 5 equals 30 over 1. See? We get 1x equals 30, which is really just x equals 30. All right? This says what number divided by 8 equals 14. So it's the same thing as this one, except there's a little bit harder math because the numbers are a little bit bigger. X divided by 8 equals 14. That's X over 8 equals 14. We can multiply both sides of the equation because of that invisible 1 there as an 8 over 1 as the reciprocal on each side. We get 8 over 8X equals, and 14 times 8 on the calculator is 112, so we get 1X equals 112, or X equals 112, see? Now, if these words like coefficient, variable, reciprocal, and all of that is really starting to get to you, take a break and watch my Get Ready for Algebra playlist linked in this description. There's a handful of videos there that are easy to watch, they're not very long, and they're going to be very helpful to you to get used to this wording, okay? You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 221. And our next video is solving multi-step equations, lesson 19b. So if you think there were a lot of steps in this, there's some algebra problems that take up an entire school paper to solve it. Yeah, it's when you start getting into substitution and stuff. So we're just going to be doing some easier multi-step equations, and I'll show you how to do them. And I'm going to have all these helpful videos linked in this description. Now, your best bet is to pause this video, write these down so that you can watch one, and then come back to this video, click on the description again, watch another one, come back to this video, go back to the description and click another one, because otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to keep going farther and farther down a rabbit hole and away from this video, or, you know, this video is going to take you away from these, see, because you're going to keep going farther down that grade level. You can also just type these into the search bar, Joanne School Grade 7 6.1, and then the correct video will come up, all right? So we're making progress here. There's 27 lessons in this GED math playlist. See that? And we're at lesson 19. So we have just this little few lessons to learn all of algebra and then this little few lessons to learn all of geometry for high school. So watching extra videos are going to help you because as we said a couple videos ago or the last video I think it was, I found out that there's a lot of stuff missing from this book and there's things that are going to help you pass the test that they've just skipped right over. So hopefully I'm finding them and covering them for you and if you get lost you can watch this one again or 
watch the helpful ones I've got linked, okay? I'm rooting for you. I really believe in you, and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.